we're live. Thank you for doing this. You're Thank welcome. you very much. Thanks for having me. You look great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so we're going to Ollie's for our last supper. We're all starting a diet tomorrow. What are you going to do differently than you're currently doing at the moment? Well, I am currently bulking. So from tomorrow, I'm starting a cut and I'm so excited because I'm genuinely sick of eating food. I'm sick of eating food. I've been bulking since January and I just, I need a break from lifting heavy and eating lots of food. And yeah, really looking forward to it. Who do you think is going to win the competition? Um, You've got a good chance. You're just saying that. Jamie's got a good chance. Do you think Jamie has a good chance? I think Jamie has a good chance. He's very driven. Um, I think I stand a good chance. I'm not knocking myself. I yeah, think I, I think, stand a good chance too. I think you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically we have a competition running at the gym between the trainers and it's uh, an eight week uh, diet. Best transformation wins the sum of money. Yeah, so yeah. we're all putting 20 euro in and whoever wins the transformation wins the money. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to jump in on it, just say <laughs> to our reception and we can win more money. <laughs> I like to win more money. I think <laughs> mm. I, I think mm. I'm gonna win this. No, but so you were bulking. You started bulking when? Mm, January. And what weight were you before you? I was only a hundred pound in January. For I hate saying that out loud because the looks everybody gives me, they're like, "You were yeah. only a hundred pound," and like I'm obviously not that. Sh I'm not tall, but I'm not short. I'm just under five six. So being a hundred pound is like really really light. That's um, the, is that the lightest you've ever been? That's the lightest I've ever been. Um. I did not like how I looked at 100 pound. I didn't get there intentionally. I didn't cut to 100 pound. I just stopped training, stopped dieting, was going through a stressful time and yeah, ended up being 100 pound. Wasn't checking my weight, wasn't looking at it. But then I know when I started my bulk, I was like, I'm going to put all the food I've been eating into my fitness pal just to see how many calories I was eating. And it was coming up at like 900 calories a day. Currently I'm eating 2,500 calories a day. So and when you were 100 pound, were you happy with your body or? God, no. no? <laughs> God, no. And I'm one of those people who's like, you should be happy, you know, no matter what you look like or any stage in your life because, you know, shit happens. But no, I was not happy. It was a very stressful time for me. And, and that's and why you chose to Yeah, bulk, that's why I chose to bulk. So put, on a, for put, me, I just. Put more muscle on and get mm -hmm. a little bit more weight back. Mm -hmm. Because I remember seeing you and like, you don't actually notice that you're 100 pound until you put the two pictures side by side till you have you at 100 and then you at 120 mm -hmm. and it's like whoa i, I think though because it was middle of winter and obviously i'm like the coldest human ever i had big jackets on a lot and hoodies under the jackets and you know tracksuit bottoms and i was always layered up to stay warm because obviously gyms are very cold in the winter and when you're not working out they're even colder so i don't think anybody actually noticed and it was more so i actually think around april i was already up probably 10 pound and everybody start going, oh my God, you look so thin. Like, did you lose weight? And I'm like, I'm actually up weight, but nobody really noticed because I was- I remember you saying that a few yeah. times to me. Like someone, like everyone keeps telling me I look really thin. And, yeah. I, was like, and I was like, I'm up 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to tell me like, oh my God, you look like, you know, a bit fluffy. Like, like that's what I wanted. I wanted to be told I looked bigger and everybody was like, oh no, you look, you look so thin. And I was like, oh great, <laughs> this bulk's going well. But I knew myself, I was already up 10 pounds, so. Um, I was happy with myself, but even happier now. But I'm looking forward to a little cut. I'm only doing the cut for the eight weeks and then I'm going straight back into a bulk. Um, and when you were bulking, like how many were you just tracking calories? Were you tracking macros? Or no, I was like, tracking my macros. I was tracking, I think I always kind of track macros before Christmas when I fell off the bandwagon with training and macros. I think that's the first time I've ever done that since I started training properly, which was so long ago now. Well, I was like 17. Um, 24 now so I think that's the first time I've ever actually done that Um, it was kind of nice maybe for a change but I did feel like crap about myself and I'm backtracking now I track my carbs fats protein calories every single day and I know a lot of people think um that's crazy to weigh everything you eat but that's what I like doing um, and what what current calories what calories did you eat to to gain 20 pounds um, I started obviously I was only eating 900 which is so unhealthy I don't recommend anybody ever do that ever um but I was eating 900, I increased that up to 1,000. And was that 900 tracked calories? Or are you no, just I wasn't tracking. You so just, I just put just... in, like I kind of eat same foods every day and I just put in what I was eating. And that, was, to 900. That, was, that was what got you to 100 pounds by just not tracking. And only I stopped tracking. And only eating roughly 900 calories per day. Yeah. And true. Because I know months. a lot of people are like, you know, when they fall off the bandwagon, it can, you can like spiral out of control and eat loads of crap and gain weight you didn't want to gain and stuff. But when I stopped tracking, I actually lose weight. 
I stop yeah, eating. I find that happens with a lot of uh, kind of women. Yeah, It's more absolutely. the opposite for men, but more women is, is when they actually fall off the bandwagon. It's actually some of their biggest things is actually getting enough calories in. Mm -hmm. So it's like they train all year round, gain muscle mass, gain, you know, some mass. And then once they fall off, it's like, I've lost it all then. I'm sure there. even when I put clients on macros and they're like, I have them on say like 1800 calories and they're like, oh my God, I can't, I can't eat all that food. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm eating 2,500, like you do get used to it. It is a struggle, it was a struggle for me. Like 1,800 at the start, I was like, whoa, this is a lot of food. Now 2,500, it's a doddle, mm -hmm. I'm fine. I can... But that's because they not only do they change their macros, but they change all the food sources that they eat because mm -hmm. if you were to eat 2,500 calories of, you know, normal food, fast food, and you know, when you start changing up for all those kind of unhealthy options for healthy options, it looks like more food. Like it is more volume, mm -hmm. but it's not actually more calories. And I think people mistake, Jesus, I'm going to gain more weight because I'm eating more. But it's like, no, it's a numbers game. It's down to your calorie intake versus what actual, because you can have a massive salad that could weigh a kilo, but mm -hmm. there's not actually that much calories in it. But again, that's going to make you feel full. So I find that people always use that as like, oh, like I want to eat less calories. I want to eat less calories. And you have to tell them, no, eat 1800, but eat 1800 good calories mm -hmm. or what what i normally follow like an 80 20 rule where i say like say if you have a thousand calorie diet or two thousand calorie diet 80 percent of those calories will come true healthy clean whole foods and then 20 percent will be true i know you like a uh, flake or a twirl after your breakfast afredo 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 bar but I think you, there's only you 90 calories that in every single day don't you i have a afredo bar every single day um see most after people, my lunch most people would be like i couldn't just do afredo i can either do a whole dairy milk or a whole you know go all in or not do it at all mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i find that that's where people actually never end up making any progress because it's like okay you're just giving yourself two options it's either this or the other mm -hmm. but really you could come into the middle and you could only have two squares of dark chocolate or you could only have you know two or three drinks on the weekend but i do find the dark chocolate's way more filling mm -hmm. i switched from a freddo to dark chocolate there a couple of weeks ago just for a change and I would recommend eating two squares of dark chocolate over eating a Freddo bar because it is definitely like I couldn't sit down and eat a whole bar of dark chocolate, whereas I could sit down and eat 10 Freddos easily, you know, and um, dark chocolate's richer. So I'd say that's the better option in the sense that you can't eat a whole bar. Remember, I bought that 100 It was a 99 percent dark chocolate. Yeah, don't recommend that to yeah, anybody. Was, yeah, I was like, because uh, I normally eat quite high percent dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. I like doing like 80 percent or 85 percent. Yeah, 80 is nice. And um, I remember I was in Super Value when I seen 99 percent. And I was like, I'm going to try that. And it literally tastes like coal. It was, charcoal. Yeah. It reminded it, me of charcoal. What, yeah. Like you bite into it and it just leaves some. There's no chocolate taste. It, no. it lost that like, I don't know. You know, when you eat dark chocolate, it has a really chocolatey taste. Like I'm talking mm -hmm. like 75 to like even 90%. But then what was that? 99? It was 99. It was, yeah. yeah no, disgusting. What 100 tastes like. Oh God. Is there 100? I don't know. I, don't, I hope <laughs> not. I, I, I would buy it if there wasn't. That bar I'd was actually like love euro. to talk to somebody who enjoys eating that 99% dark chocolate. I really would. Just like, what is it you like? I had all, I remember I had Dan and everyone try it and they were like. I don't think one staff member here enjoyed that dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. None at all. Um, you know, it's disgusting. Don't recommend so, that. So your diet and as of tomorrow. So we're mm -hmm. all going out for a meal tonight. We're all going to have our last, last cheat meal, last, last supper. supper. Um, and diet starts I kind of started my diet kind of last Monday but I've kind of towards now the end of the week because we all decided to do this competition mm -hmm. that I decided okay Friday Saturday I'm just going to relax and chill and I'm going to go get a nice feed here tonight and then come tomorrow then it's Hell for it, it's all it's all guns blazing that's mm -hmm. that's the plan Um, but your training and your nutrition now are you going to change anything from bulking or are you going to stick to the same plan no I've changed everything um obviously i took last week this week sorry off training and uh, when this is posted it'll be last week um took last week off training first time i've taken a break off training since january i haven't had one week off um and i was doing three weight days a week so i was doing upper body lower body full body um the odd glutes and abs session but i was like lifting heavy he heavy heavy <laughs> doing less exercises and you know eating more i was still walking every day i was still doing yoga every day um but i was training less lifting heavier and um, now i'm doing upper body lower body full body glutes and abs that's my new split but it's a higher rep range so i have mostly like three sets of 15 four sets of 15 like 12 to 15 reps some of them i even have up to 20 reps i've added loads of burpees jump squats like more 
little exercises like that instead of just going in and doing a heavy squat, a heavy leg press, you know. Um, and I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really like, I don't particularly like lifting heavy. Yeah, I was just about to say that, like, you've never been a fan of, no. of like, like, because I know our training styles are completely different. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like training to almost failure. Like, I know there's failure, what most people would call failure, but there's like a, a part beyond that where, you know, like you actually physically can't do anymore. Like, when you do that last rep, it's like, okay, one more on top of that. Like, I can train like, like that with legs, but with upper body, it's a little bit harder. And I find that, I don't know, I, tr I like heavyweight i like absolutely a, a nice rep range like seven to kind of nine do you know that's kind of where i like to be at five would be like the lowest i'd go to um but that's really what i'm looking forward to getting back into now is like some solid structure and actually a training program that like i'm just gonna do and actually get some you know progress on because i think the last kind of like say six to nine months i've kind of just been doing you know two three sessions or a week or if even and i've just been kind of doing things here and there like i'll come in i'll just no be like i'll just do a bit of push i'll do a bit of pull i'll do some legs and there was actually nothing to actually follow so now i've kind of like i feel like that's the first time you've ever done that though yeah you know like i the whole time i've known you've always trained and i think that's the first time you've ever kind of stopped training Definitely. opening you know the what, gym was obviously do you know what i found was the hardest when i always found that like I needed somewhere that like I could I know it sounds cheesy but like I needed somewhere that was like home mm -hmm. do you know what I mean that I could like feel like I could train out of and when I first joined the gym obviously the gym that I was in I always felt that like that was the first place I ever trained so that was fine but then once then I started kind of you know going to different gyms and I was in and out of swords and stuff like that I never really felt like there was like that yeah, kind of home, that, yeah. home gym do you know that kind of way and i was always like going away and try, trying and i was like two months here two months there a month here and i was just like yeah i remember we were going to like fly fit for a while and, and then i was in plan well, breaking and while, yeah, yeah yeah and then yeah so and know, they're all great gyms it's just you have to i think everybody has you know you get a vibe when you walk into a gym and you know everybody has their home mm -hmm. basically and i think i think that when we first started here i expected this just to feel like home right away and it didn't and then like just chaos hit the fan and or yeah yeah it was just mental mm -hmm. and then trying to train was like very sporadic it would be like okay i'll train now and then it'd be like right uh this is after happening so then you just drop but to be fair yeah there's no structure um it's easy to have structure when you work for a gym as opposed to owning your own gym and um, i definitely think like even now like if somebody calls in sick you jump you have mm -hmm. to jump you have to give up everything everything you're doing and come here like sure how many sundays have we planned out and something has happened like sundays our only day together like fully together and how many times have we ended up in the gym you know but i guess that's what you sign up for mm -hmm. i still i'm still grateful for the gym and i appreciate it but it was definitely hard and i'm i kind of feel like really comfortable now like last i think last week and you can agree with this week was like the first week where just everything felt really really good and although there was little hiccups which there is every week there's something just felt really nice like we have a great team going and everyone just works well together everyone likes each other there's a good vibe in the gym the members are great they even have a good vibe about them and now we're starting a new plan and i just i feel like we're going into like a new phase of our life 100 percent. i think yeah. it's really good like the gym is only open eight months and you know i don't i i'm sure a lot of people who are even going to listen to this who have their own gym are going to be like they'll understand the struggle like for the first year and you sure we're eight months in is it eight months eight months yeah yeah I like think it could be nine. nine months yeah it could be something like that and like i'm starting to feel like i feel like this gym has been here forever i just yeah. feel like we've always been here it's mm -hmm. like a home now and we have like a little family here and it's just i don't know good vibes and then that, i think that's that that competition that we have is 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 more like yeah i think we need a bit of competition yeah, it's not even like okay about the money it's like we just want to beat each other, beat each other like, you know that kind of way and it's like okay i can see jamie or i can see jordan or i can see you know amy doing that and i'm gonna just you know do something more so it's gonna be days where like jamie does five minutes more cardio and i'm gonna be like well i know jamie's been coming in every day and you know saying i'm gonna win or he's like just so convinced he's gonna win that it's like as much as he's joking and like it's just all a laugh it makes me be like i'm gonna be him yeah. like i want to be him, him now him yeah you know I mean? <laughs> and i mean that in like the nicest possible way but he comes in and like riles everyone up and we're like you yeah, know we yeah. definitely have to beat you anyway yeah, you know and um, but yeah it's really exciting i think everything's going really well and good vibes all around yeah so. but it, it wasn't wasn't it it was tough for a while it was really tough yeah like 
that happens in life though doesn't it <laughs> i think we we made it a lot tougher like our mindset and our attitudes towards it were like i was having a really hard time you were also having a really hard time Bo had bad energy two bad energies together just wasn't good and yeah it was just really really difficult we came to a lot of obstacles we didn't expect to come to and we overcame them and we're better people because of it but yeah, I I always say that like literally no matter how bad something is like it's actually a good thing because like when you feel bad something like, good's it, about to happen. is about to happen mm-hmm. do you know what I mean so always like and I like, think that's that's happened in our lives a lot like any time either one of us has hit rock bottom like obviously if you hit rock bottom I hit rock bottom too like you know your problems are my problems my problems are yours and I think like any time that we hit rock bottom something really good always happens and that gets us through everything now Mm -hmm. and I don't know whether it's because that's what we believe and like we manifest it because we believe every time things get really bad something really good happens and it just happens now like all the time and I think like we nearly attracted that into our own lives and Mm -hmm. you know I'm I'm laughing there you were like all all your problems are my problems and all my problems are your problems yeah except when it comes to cars (laughs) they're all your problems (laughs) so when your car breaks down it's my problem yeah absolutely yeah it's only my problem yeah I'm not even gonna argue with that one yeah that that's all your problem (laughs) yeah yeah even when I'm booking an NCT for my car I'm like you need this day off work because I've got an NCT (laughs) and then when i have all those stuff you know i actually remember you brought your car for nct recently i didn't even know you went yeah yeah no (laughs) cars are just not my thing that's what you're supposed to be able to do you just (laughs) ring them you book it and you drive there you give it in and they give it back and you drive home yeah i know it's easy in your head my head that's chaos (laughs) that's good but um yeah so we have what eight weeks to train eight Mm -hmm. weeks to diet and i think eight weeks is long enough isn't it eight weeks is long enough and i think yeah, we both have plans ready. You're going to get back into your jiu-jitsu. Well, right? yeah, that's I don't the plan. Know. I no? don't think so. No? No. I never, never, never planned going back. Oh, I thought you were going back. No, I I was there and then it's just, it's two hours down. And do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's an hour down. So maybe do the eight week challenge and then after that look into, because yeah, you do enjoy it. I'm just going to train like six days here. Yeah, six day. Are you doing six days a week? I'm doing six days. Oh a week. no, that makes me feel like crap for doing four. No, I'm doing. But six. I'm doing four, and I'm doing seven walks. Like I'm walking every day, yoga every day, and four gym sessions. That's fine. Yeah. No, see, look. <laughs> no <way. laughs> I don't want you to beat me. No. <laughs> but I think I'm carrying more weight now. Do you mm-hmm. get what I mean? But that's why I feel so like you're at an advantage. In, that, that's in my favor. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like it's kind of an annoying. I'll plan on coming down maybe 25, even 30 pounds. Like I'm currently, I weighed, I actually bought the scales today. Uh, like a? Yeah, a new one. Like not just a one that was in little and uh, weighed myself. Obviously I'd eaten and drank whatever I drank today. And uh, I think it was 90 kg, which is like 200 pounds, I think. But I reckon I'll be like starting weight like 196 or 197. I'm going to weigh in tomorrow and do like a the first kind of like we need to do pictures obviously yeah, as well yeah. weigh-ins so exciting yeah so i'm gonna do that and then i don't know yeah. how, every, how everybody's gonna feel tomorrow because obviously it's starting tomorrow tomorrow's a bank all day and um, i'm prepped and ready to oh go. i'm ready to go too yeah. but i know like you we're going see, out tonight and i have two big massive tubs of rice that is like gonna do me for the week and i just have like all my greek yogurt all my cottage cheese all my beef all my turkey oh meats. i always know like i always since we were younger that like you me in business when you buy cottage cheese again <laughs> i always like anytime i see you with cottage cheese i'm like oh he means business now <laughs> yeah. yeah it's the light one as well yeah that you put on top but of I everything you eat love it. Like, i know you do it's weird right because like i'll make like a big massive stir fry mm-hmm. and then i'll put like really hot hot sauce on it but then i put the cottage cheese on and that like kind of counteracts the i know the the hotness because it kind of cools it down at the same time <laughs> And it's just like the perfect meal. But you know what the thing is? Like, I don't like cottage cheese and I've tried to like it. But anytime I look at your food, I'm like, I want to eat that so bad. Like, you're right. It looks so nice. Like, it cools down the hot sauce. It does, yeah. (laughs) It is. It's perfect. But, um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to get back in. I'm really excited. I've worked out my macros. I think I'm going to be eating roughly around because i have a high output every every day like in terms of like cardio and you know just things that always on your feet yeah i think it's about about for me to die about two six two two thousand six hundred and fifty calories yeah i I think i'm one nine mine mine's quite high for like yeah 
I know like when my PT is like I have them on like 1718 I think mm-hmm. I'm eating like one nearly 2000 mm-hmm. um, See I would rather much get, have a higher output because as well like even in terms of like a diet and I always rather would diet on higher calories mm-hmm. and higher cardio the reason why is is because like you get the benefits of extra food extra nutrients and you also get the benefits of cardio mm-hmm. so it's like two benefits but when you start restricting when you say okay well like I'll, I won't do any cardio but I'll restrict my food even more so you're getting less nutrients in your in your in your food mm-hmm. but you're actually getting no benefits of actually cardiovascular stuff so I always say to my clients like you know more food more cardio more food and more output more food and more output because you're gonna feel much better like you mm-hmm. know there's no point just sitting at home on the couch or you know just you know driving everywhere and just you know being really sedentary but really restricting your diet you should really try to whether it's you know find an hour at work or a lunch break or get up an hour earlier or you know find an hour in the evening to give more to exercise because and allow a just move more, more in general yeah and allow a little bit more food in because yeah like some people genuinely do only have what's a tdee which is your total daily energy expenditure is only like 1500 calories for them to stay the same way forever based on you know their sedentary lifestyle mm-hmm. so like i always use the example like imagine you know like a taxi driver or a bus driver or a lorry driver they work 13 14 hours and they're just sitting the whole time yeah. you know driving they come home they're exhausted they sleep for eight hours they get up they do it again and you know the only time they move is really when they're going from the house to the car or you know to the truck to from the truck to the shop or whatever to get some food and um, you know that person is literally uh, probably only burning thousand calories every single day mm-hmm. if if even so like some people would have like a a, a maintenance calories of about you know 14 1500 so when I, someone comes into me and it's really low calories i'll always say let's get more food in but let's get more output in where yeah. can we where can we can we start going on like you know walks on the weekend like what do you do what how do you socialize will i go to the pub well how can we <laughs> switch that up walk we, to the pub even <laughs> <laughs> can we go on long walks do you know what i mean can yeah. we go out to hold can you do something do you know what i mean can you track your steps every single day can you go from three thousand steps to thirteen thousand steps or fifteen thousand steps i always try to get my clients up to twenty thousand steps every single day i know a couple of people that i had uh, for personal training were saying like oh you know i can't track my steps i like don't have the money for a fitbit or an apple watch right now but i know a lot of smartphones they they track your steps now like i i didn't realize my phone tracked my steps until you bought me the apple watch as a present and then i went into the health app and i was like oh my god this has been tracking my steps for months so a lot of people their phones do that for them like we all mostly have our phones with us all the time so you can even do it on your phone now you know yeah and i think that's great because i do think getting something like a fitbit or a smartwatch is like oh it's an investment yeah Yeah. like it's something that's just you need to do because Mm -hmm. it's like a weighing scales or kitchen scales do you get what i mean like these are tools and you can't like you can't lose weight or you can't track your health or you can't do these things without these certain tools it's just like like a like a builder that goes to a building site like he needs a saw he needs you know what i mean like you actually need these to be able to um actually diet and actually lose weight because otherwise you'll spend two years trying to figure it out and you'll just never get anywhere Mm -hmm. because you'll just be constantly guessing oh i roughly done a thousand ten thousand steps today no, you actually need them 4,000. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I roughly ate 2,000 calories. No, you actually ate 8,000. So you need things like my fitness pal and the weighing scales. And you need to, you know, I don't necessarily think you need to weigh in every single week, but I think you need to regularly, if your the goal is to drop Monitor body fat, your weight. I think you do need to use the scales to do that. <laughs> no, but I definitely do think that, like, they are an investment of a fitness watch, like Apple Watch, Fitbit. I know, um one of the staff members Rebecca the other day was saying that they have one was it on eBay or Amazon and it's like it was like 30 euro and it, it just tracks your steps but like that's absolutely fine I seen a thing on Instagram the other day and somebody was giving out about this trend where you do 10,000 steps a day because everybody like tries to get to 10,000 I try to get to 10,000 a day like I actually try sometimes like 15,000 yeah. because I normally hit 10 I try to get up to about 18 to 20 yeah like everyone that's... has a little goal but I seen a thing on Instagram today and somebody was like oh you know that's just a trend like it's stupid it's just a trend and I was like that's a great trend that is like such a good trend to be going around like it's a healthy trend it's like good it's, because it's the number one thing that everybody can do absolutely like, 
like you don't need to go and buy gym membership you don't need to go and buy a diet plan or a training plan or whatever literally if you started moving more every single day mm -hmm. that would just accumulate to more calories burnt and over a long period of time even if you just make healthier choices like take out sugar drinks take out sugary foods and um, you know you'd be <laughs> off onto a flying start and yeah. then once you get some momentum then it's much easier to continue going but i think i remember watching <coughs> um gary mcgowan he calls himself skinny gaz mm -hmm. and i always thought like he always talked about steps and tracking the steps and you know parking the furthest car space away from tesco and increasing your steps and it's not until you actually start doing it with clients and doing it yourself that you realize that is such an important tool to be able to do like if you can add five thousand steps on top of your activity every single day forever like it's massive amount of activity at the end of the month year you know and you want to keep that lifestyle habit as opposed to just you know like we can all jump on the treadmill for 40 minutes but that's not sustainable do mm -hmm. you know what i mean like well you know you could probably do it for a long period of time but eventually you'll get tired and but if you start it's boring <laughs> no you, one likes really yeah. walking on a treadmill just looking at a wall mm -hmm. um, so if you start like doing things like that allow you to get more steps so whether it's take up a sport whether it's take up you know what i mean um like just take part in like kids activities as opposed to you know stand on the sidelines and just watch do you mm -hmm. know what i mean and you just start doing things then it allows you to bring that step count right up and it's just something that you know you don't even have to think about you don't have to go oh i need to go do my cardio today because it's like no i already got my eighteen thousand steps in so mm -hmm. but um you were saying instagram did you see instagram took likes away oh yeah <laughs> what do you think no i like it i have to say i've heard like a lot of i mixed. don't like it i have heard a lot of mixed opinions i i think personally like just because of like you know like the business the way that the gym is like instagram is now what like television and what like like the news and all was before it's like where everyone goes to promote their business mm -hmm. you get it? it's it's basically what it is now i think looking from like a business aspect and then like you know young the young generation's mental health aspect it's like two different things so like i agree with you like business wise i'm kind of like mm, do i like it but then for my own personal instagram and like everyone else's personal instagram i'm like oh no it's it's Ste nice it's like definitely good for for people it allows people to say okay i can post a picture and i don't necessarily need to worry about how many likes it gets because mm -hmm. i know a lot of people... or like what time i'm posting it because i know that's a big thing mm -hmm. you know you post that like you check your stats say you've got your personal page set up as like a personal blog and you can check your stats and see the busiest times and but you yeah, know see i i have like mixed opinions but i definitely think it's good and i i like i do like it it's not that i i don't like it or dislike it it's just it's just a thing that happened and i thought you know it'd be really good for people's mental health but i'm hearing a lot of other people's opinions on it lately about like what as you said businesses and then somebody else was saying that you know like that's it kind of it's a goal nearly like a lot of people kind of push harder because they want you know more followers more likes on their photos and i was kind of like yeah i get that too and um, i think i was just more looking at the mental health side of things and i do think it's better because i did google it the first time i said it to you remember i said it a couple of weeks ago and um, i seen instagram were removing likes and i said it to you and then i just like googled it and i was in bed that night just reading a few articles and a lot of people were saying i can't remember the exact article i was reading but they were saying that it was because they want people to post pictures they want to post and they have so many people that upload pictures within say 15 minutes if it's not getting enough likes or hasn't got enough likes they're taking it down you know that kind of way and they kind of like they wanted instagram to be a place where you know you could just post freely and like what you want and express yourself more so than being solely focused on oh my god that picture must not be nice because it didn't get enough likes and taking it down so i definitely think like instagram's point of view was but like they but I think if they have to take away likes, do you not think they have to take away like the likes of like followers, comments and followers yeah, as well? I thought do you know that. what I mean? It's like, why take away one and not take away the other? Because still you're going to have those people who have, you know, less followers than other people and the other people who have, you know, a million followers. Those people are still going to know that that person is getting loads of likes on their photos because of, you know, how Instagram was before. Mm -hmm. But no, I think... I think you either remove one or I think, sorry, you remove none or you remove them all. Yeah. But I think if you remove them all, then that defeats the purpose of Instagram. I just think like from reading that article, obviously people are deleting their pictures because they're not getting enough likes, but I don't think people are deleting their 
Instagrams because they don't have as much followers I think likes were like the main issue or like I don't think people were deleting a photo because they didn't get enough comments I think likes was like a really big issue see I do this thing where I just post drop yeah do you know I I, I always, always post say that yeah to do, it, do it to everybody but like when you post a picture you'll be like you'll watch your phone won't you um it depends like if I'm sitting at home and I post a picture and then no I wouldn't I don't watch my phone you no. make it sound like I'm sitting there no I don't watch my phone but like I'll pick it up, say, in 15 minutes and, you know. Like, you even have your, oh, you have my notifications and all turned off. Mm -hmm. like you have your notifications on, so every time someone comments or posts or likes, you'll get it. My notifications are turned on on Instagram. I love Instagram. Like, I really do. Like, I love, I love Instagram. Um, WhatsApp? No, my notifications are turned off on WhatsApp. I love looking at people's pictures. Answering messages has never really been my thing. Like, I don't, it's not that I don't like answering messages. I get, like, anxiety when I have too many messages i don't know yeah. why that's like me with emails so I delete them all like i can't without replying no obviously not no i mean like you know, do you ever see when you have like one thousand unopened? no god no i can't no, no yeah no, i cannot <laughs> no do that. like i'm like okay if that email i open it and then i delete it like mm -hmm. even if it's irrelevant do you know what i mean i don't just let it sit there and go oh yeah it's a uh, you know google sending me some marketing advice and i'm like no open delete mm -hmm. i'll have zero i want to have zero unopened emails in my inbox by the end of the day yeah or else i can't go to sleep <laughs> yeah i'm like that with whatsapp i'm like okay reply to all my whatsapps but like i think that's hard with social media because i know i know you're the same as well especially with now we both have the business pages it's like you come home and obviously you've got messages off like your friends and your PTs who like you're so excited like you want to talk to them do you know what I mean like you want to help them and you do look forward to replying to them but then you also have like the odd like you know family message um Instagram message like personal account business account Facebook message personal account business account then you've got your WhatsApp messages your text messages there's so many platforms where you can message people that it's a little bit overwhelming um love Instagram though like I love I don't know I love photos I love seeing other people's photos I love posting photos I just really like you're really Instagram you're really good on Instagram Thanks. I love all your posts. <laughs> Thank you. I love I love a good quote on my story. Yeah, I love yeah. a good positive quote. Girls supporting girls quote and yeah. you should you should do more yoga posts. More yoga, yeah. You I don't should. know. I don't really talk about the fact that I do yoga a lot. Um But you do it every day. I do yoga every single day. And you haven't posted it once. I have never posted it. Um I had this fear of like I definitely think I turned the gym was always like a hobby of mine and I turned that into a career and I'm happy I turned that into a career, but I said that was the only hobby I'd ever turn into a career because I still wanted to have just a hobby and I think yoga is like my hobby and I love doing it and I, the only reason why I would post it is because I'd love to encourage more people to try it because it's amazing it, yoga is amazing it, I've tried it once with you you tried it once with me and <laughs> um, you did enjoy it but you, we both do it for different reasons yeah like we said before remember I was telling you that the hardest the hardest bit I found was she was trying to say you know get into this position but also breathe in as you're like falling and then breathe out as you're like coming back and i was like i'm actually trying to get into the position first before i, I think about my breathing. obviously we went to a yoga class i do a lot of yoga at home like off youtube and stuff as well obviously we go to classes too or i go to classes and um, but we went to an hour and a half long mm -hmm. yoga class and there's a lot of different poses whereas i started first i was going to yoga classes and i I wasn't even listening to anything about the breathing and it is a lot of connecting your breathing with the movement that that is what yoga is about and um, I didn't get it at all and then I started doing a lot of yoga at home and I was doing just like 10 minute yogas where it was like back neck and shoulders and it's really easy to bring your breathing into that because the movements for your back neck and shoulders are not like difficult to get into you know that kind of way and then I you know picked it up and got like went on to like harder like yoga youtube videos or like i started going to the intermediate to advanced yoga class and i was like i'm actually getting really good at this like and now i, I would never do yoga without the breathing and i'm like how did i ever do yoga without the breathing it's like your breath flows with the movement and everything flows and i don't know i think yoga like as well more meditation as well for you isn't it yeah i think it's, it's more like headspace it's headspace and yeah. even like a lot of yoga classes that i go to the yoga teacher will always say you know like leave everything on the mat like you just it's just you and your mat and you are so focused on the poses and the breathing and like yoga teachers will often say you know like it could be like a really simple move but you'll be like so focused on that like spread your fingertips push your toes into the ground so you're focused on your breathing the movement pushing your fingertips into the ground or spreading your fingertips and pushing your toes into the ground and 
there's so much to think about that you genuinely forget about absolutely everything else and it's like you just I personally just like shut the whole world out yeah I remember one day you'd done it here and I was like Nicole come here and get something and you were like gave me like dagger eyes you know what I mean? like, don't you're disturb like, me don't do not disturb me and I was like okay I will not disturb you but I could easily do it for like four hours I could yeah I remember that day remember that day and I'd done like two hours of yoga and I was like she is gone where is she gone <laughs> couldn't I'm, couldn't get you not, and I, I do was... I just put my phone on airplane mode I leave it on my bed I'm like you know it's only okay I do it for an hour every day like sometimes you know if I wake up a little because I get up an hour earlier to do my yoga like I do prioritize yoga because I love it I look forward to it and I put my yoga mat out like not I'm not talking about yoga class I go to yoga class too but at home I put my mat out and I light my candle and I close my blinds and make my room kind of dark and it's just like I don't know it's cozy and I just love it so much and afterwards I feel like a different person I just feel like I'm ready to start the day and especially on yoga there's a girl on yoga that anyone who does yoga would know her name's yoga with Adrian on YouTube and I think she's one of the top yogis on YouTube well as far as I can see she has hundreds upon hundreds of yoga videos and yoga i remember i remember i watched one of her videos yeah you probably just searched yoga she's the first person you know what i found so hard how are you supposed to look at the tv and get in the mood do you know i don't actually look at the tv yeah but how now i know a lot of the names of the movements and i kind (laughs) of i was like trying to do it i was like breaking my neck trying to like look (laughs) at the tv do you know what i mean you kind of like movements flow together and you can kind of nearly guess what's coming next if you're so this was a beginner's one this was like the complete beginner one and i was like okay i need to watch what you're doing so it was almost it was almost like i had to watch it and then do it and then like watch it and, and it was ruining the it. flow yeah there was no flow at all yeah it was just like <laughs> right this is... even at the yoga class i'm sure you said before that you do yoga like solely for flexibility mm-hmm. and then like i don't do yoga for flexibility at all like you know i think but i definitely think at the start i did like i was like oh, i'm gonna get really flexible i'm gonna get really good at yoga and I'd done it like a couple of years ago, a couple of times. And it was only really last year, kind of like, I don't know, like found yoga like properly and realized it's just a place of like no judgment. And, you know, everything gets left on the mat. And it's just, yeah, like nobody's judging anybody. Everyone's there for themselves and for their own reasons. And yeah, I think. Yeah, yoga is brilliant. Yeah. Because it's like, it's something that anybody can go to and be accepted like right away. Although yeah, it's, it's just like. like if you even like struggle to come to a gym environment like yoga is like like your way in of to like doing anything do you know mm-hmm. what i mean so like i know a lot of people will struggle to just walk through the doors of the gym whether it's intimidation or whatever it is but i know that like yoga is like it has that thing where it's like i think once you get in so if you like take a step in the door of a yoga class i know gyms can be a little bit intimidating and a lot of people do struggle with that i just feel like it's not like, there the energy in a room where yoga is happening is just so good and there's such a good vibe like the first yoga class I ever went to I remember like going in and I felt a little bit nervous but definitely not as nervous as I felt the very first time I went to the gym with you years ago and I went in and I was like I was there like two minutes and I was like this is great like I walked in and there was three other people there and they were like morning and I was like oh morning you know like you walk into a gym and no one would really be like you know oh hey what's the story if they didn't know you they'd Mm -hmm. you know and I walked in, everybody was just like, morning, like, how are you? What's your name? And then, like, the yoga teacher came in and it was all real, like, calm and just chilled and good vibe. And, oh, I don't know, it's just great. I recommend it to everybody I talk to. And anytime, like, I just feel like any problem I have, yoga. Like, there is yoga for everything. There is poses for absolutely everything. And, yeah, it's just, I don't know, anytime I have a hard day or a headache or... <laughs> Like anything goes yoga. wrong or even when it's going right, I just go to yoga. I just, yeah, I need to my do thing. More yoga. I definitely I think like everybody should try it. And, you know, I think the world definitely needs more yoga. I definitely um, think it's the next, like that and meditation is like the next big thing mm-hmm. in, in the fitness industry. It's definitely a trend. Like it's it's definitely a trend going on right now, like mindfulness and 100%. meditation, yoga. Like, just like, just like like training and bodybuilding was like big kind of let's say like five six seven years Mm -hmm. ago i think now or even just how lifting weights as well like it was always kind of like okay you come to the gym and you know the bodybuilders lifted weights and everyone else lifted or everyone else just went on the elliptical yeah and then kind of started you know changing and now it's like okay 
everyone kind of comes in lift weights and women were afraid to lift weights and now they're not and i think now everyone all the bodybuilders are now going to be going and doing yoga classes and yeah. mindfulness classes sure, look at you yeah <laughs> you do a lot of as much as you don't do a lot of yoga you do do a lot of meditation you do headspace yeah i try um, he- i try headspace like most mornings but like i don't always do it when i'm doing when i'm doing good i am that's something i'm gonna try to add in i find you know i find hard when i do it when i'm tired in the morning i fall asleep so like, that's not a good time but um i think headspace is great headspace is a great app yeah, you, you got me into headspace and it's good and what's your run streak at the moment? um i have done headspace for i think every that's day so my good. run streak is like 200 and 12 days i that's, think that's yeah cool. I've you're, never... gonna, you're gonna get the year award yeah i'm gonna get the year <laughs> award and then i'm gonna keep going next year because definitely my life has improved so much since i started doing headspace and yoga yeah it just kind of opens up like it, a lot of people like are a bit fuzzy when it comes to meditation oh no that's not for me but it's not like meditation it's not like you know going mm, it's more okay your thoughts like when you're just going through your day-to-day when you're in the car driving and you're just constantly thinking about something mm-hmm. it just allows you to kind of catch the thought and like forget about it almost yeah let go of thoughts yeah, yeah. that's the whole point of meditation and then you can yeah. actually f- refocus on driving make sure you're driving correct make sure you're in between pay the attention lines. to like your hands on the wheel and yeah, yeah. And it just it teaches you how to concentrate mm-hmm. do you know what i mean it doesn't actually and then when you concentrate on driving when you get to your job or when you get to the gym you're not sitting on your phone going oh what will i do today or you're it not teaches you to your... live in the now oh uh, yeah right now actually, in this moment and actually concentrate on each task that's in front mm-hmm. of you and then complete that task like really well and then move on to but the next complete one. that task without 50 other thoughts going through your head exactly yeah but if you have 50 thoughts going through your head you're not going to complete it as well you'll have Absolutely, to do it yeah and it will take you three times longer than it actually needs to do mm-hmm. so i always that's what always got me through ikea when i was working there was I always used to be like, I'm going to pretend I'm the best checkout person. Yeah. And just be so fast and try idea. to keep moving and moving and moving. And my shifts used to go like that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because I used to, although I, it was a great place and I loved it, I hated that at the same time because mm-hmm. I just couldn't stop thinking about here and all the stuff that had to be done for here. And I think day, that was a lot of excitement though. Yeah. Um, but head, Headspace teaches you to even let go of positive thoughts. Mm-hmm. It's not just letting go of negative ones. Just be now, like in the I, now. What I found was when I worked really hard on the checkouts, then I actually performed better when I left because I had more energy. Mm-hmm. When I actually was living in my head at the checkouts, I'd leave to go work on, you know, the gym and I'd get nothing done because I'd just be so mentally drained because I'd just done six hours of just constantly going... I need to do this, I need thinking to do this, I need to do this, like I need to do this. And energy draining. Mm-hmm. Like thinking constantly ruins your energy. It does. Like I I think that's something we've both learned a lot about this year is letting go of thoughts and, you know, not overthinking anything and just living in the now, not really worrying about anything or anyone else and just worrying about just, us and this moment right now because yeah. that's all we really have, isn't it? I think you should live in the now but also like have, you know, good ambition and good goal. Well, yeah, you can, can have be, goals but... And that can be unique to you and what Mm -hmm. you want to do like as in like you can you can chase you should have something to work towards absolutely but at the same time we love a good goal don't we (laughs) you shouldn't you shouldn't allow that that thing you're working towards to take over your life and take the fun out of it Mm -hmm. which is what i'm saying i think that might be episode one done i think so how how did you find it yeah no thank you for coming on we had a trial run obviously yesterday and i feel a lot better i had the trial run had my nerves gone but my hands are still sweating yeah. <laughs> so much well you've done brilliant uh, thank you so you're did you brilliant. well done you so proud of you no, thank you <laughs> <laughs> so that's episode one done and thank you for listening thanks for having me also you're very welcome <laughs>